Hello all you star citizens out there, this is Showas with the Airheads Gaming Community and I am here with another long overdue star citizen video. Now, the I saw an update, there are plenty of updates including systems and all things like that, the, the, dog, the dog fighting uh, module is supposed to be coming out in two weeks, supposed to be released on May 23rd I think, and I'll be doing videos on that and uh, that's gonna be amazing and that's gonna be awesome. Uh, for those of you who don't know or didn't see, supposedly they said that they're gonna try and get the dogfighting module out on May 23rd, uh, two weeks from, I think it's May 23rd or 29th, one of the two, I'm sorry if I got it wrong. It will be released and it will be released with the, supposedly they said it packs, I don't know if they changed it yet, but I watched the hour long packs preview, the Aurora, the Origin 300i, and the Hornet, and the variants, or most of the variants will be playable. There will be a free play mode and a horde mode with the Vandal, uh, attack vehicles, the scythes, I don't know if any other Vandal videos or, uh, vessels are in there. From there, after a couple weeks or whenever they can, they will begin implementing a multiplayer structure using a different server and uh, trying to get multiplayer in. And from there, there will be team-based games, free-for-all, uh, cooperative against the Vandal Swarm and Capture the Flag, and mostly it'll be single-seat fighters. Uh, phase two of after uh, maybe a couple months or maybe, you know, however long it's going to be, as soon as they can, they're going to get the larger vessels such as the Constellation and those multi-crew vessels in the dogfighting module that you can fight with. And then the third phase before going into Alpha and Beta of the Persistent Universe, which will be very small when it comes out, uh, will be introducing the FPS and boarding mechanics and the Capture the Idris first-person shooter uh, game type. All of this is, again, planned. This was set at PAX. This could change. This could change at any time. This isn't a, a, a big thing. This isn't uh, not a big thing. This is a big thing, but the schedule isn't concrete and this could change at any time. So those of you who are excited and just like, oh my god, this is going to happen. It's going to happen soon. Just calm down. It may not. Problems happen. Things happen. You won't have anything until we get it on our hands. Although I would like to say that uh, to really, I would like you guys to really think about it because this is pretty awesome. They're adding in the ability for us to play, but on top of that, they're adding in a whole other part of the website that will allow us to track stats. There's going to be leaderboards and all kinds of things. And so when you really think about it, if if uh, if the guys at Robert Space Industries had come out and just made a next gen uh, cry engine, fully Newtonian physics story mode campaign. Uh, like the Wing Commander games or whatever, plus there was a multiplayer component that allowed you to use different kinds of ships and there was Capture the Flag interfaces up. Like, the, the, the story mode, just like it would be back in Wing Commander, HD with all the cool stuff, plus an online multiplayer that was match-based and tracked, would be awesome. And it, to tell you the truth, if that's all this was, most people would pay 60 bucks for that. That'd be a $60 game. That would be a story mode with branching paths that had replayability, they could produce DLC content, and they could do a, a FPS, and on top of that, uh, fighter-based multiplayer match bases, and that'd be awesome. That is basically a full game, but they're going above and beyond making it an MMO with a persistent universe and persistent landmarks and randomly generated content and all kinds of stuff, so there's a lot of work to be put in this, but it's so amazing. It's kind of interesting to me because it kind of hit me that, wow, I mean, but... We are going to go, uh, there's been lots of updates recently, uh, I wanted to do a bunch of updates about a lot of things, cause I'm, I don't like to be one of these guys who's like, well I'm gonna talk about the systems here and the ships here, I don't like to separate a lot of content into a bunch of videos, and just say, well I'll cover it in the next video, I don't like that, but, I was going through and I was going to do, this video is about ship updates, they updated the ship page and added in a lot of new stats, and I wanted to talk about it, but, when I was writing, down the outline for what I'm going to say, it's a lot. And you, I was going to talk about a, a couple more things than I was, but this is just going to be about the ship update page and about the, the ships. And then in other videos, I'll talk about uh, other updates and other things. And I'm sorry, I don't I don't want to be the guys who just separates videos up constantly. Like, y'all, I'll talk about this in the next video. I'll talk about this in the next video. But I just want to talk about the, um, the, the new ship page, some of the new ship stats, uh, the Vandal vessels that I never talked about, um, 
um, and uh, how the Vandal like vessels are really intimidating and what they look like and what they'll be used for, and uh, and I will be really, really, I'm just really excited for this. Let's just jump into it. Uh, there's been lots of ship name changes and stuff like that. Uh, there's uh, the Retaliator now has a civilian variant in the ship page now. This was to be expected, but the big thing here though is that the armament for the civilian version hasn't been released yet. Most of what we know about how it's armed is the military version. Uh, version. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what kind of turrets, if if even if we get all of the turrets that were on the military version, maybe they'll take a few out, maybe not. Uh, and what they'll be armed with. Will they be the custom turrets that look like they're on, or will it just be some guns you strap on the side? Kind of like that, uh, the top turret on the Drake, where it's just two guns you can pull off any vessel on, uh, mounted on a swivel. Uh, also, I was wondering during the limited sale if we purchased the Retaliator Civilian or the Retaliator Military. Uh, honestly, I believe that we purchased the Retaliator Civilian because them selling us the military version would be kind of silly, but we'll just have to wait and see what we get. Uh, the Idris Frigate. The Idris Corvette is now the Idris Frigate. Uh, the Squadron 42 campaign people uh, wanted the player to start out in the story mode assigned to an Idris uh, vessel. However, it was too small for what they wanted to do with it. Uh, well, it only could fit two fighters in it, uh, so I'm guessing that if they wanted a squadron of at least five ships, they'd have to make it bigger, and they want to probably participate in more larger battles and such. So the interest has been upscaled. It should be able to hold more fighters. Uh, I don't see much difference in armament, but I may have missed something. Uh, I also, the expected amount of crew has stayed at 10, but that could page. It's not final yet, so we'll have to see and wait. Also, if you bought an Idris Corvette, you still have an Idris Corvette. You, you still used to now have an Idris Frigate. You do not have... You, your, whatever your Idris when you bought it is not getting replaced with whatever the new Corvette is going to be. And, and they are designing a new Corvette. You get to keep your Idris, which is now a frigate. Some finally, some stats for some vessels we've been waiting on, guys. The 890 Jump, the Luxury Out by Origin Jump works. Uh, there's no artwork. A lot of these don't have artwork, but they do have stats 70 meters long and 20 meters high. It's 15 meter, it's 15 meters longer than the Constellation and 6 meters shorter off the ground for reference. And I'm using, I'm going to be using the Connie a lot for reference because it's one of the few vessels that are very large. It's the largest vessel that we can fit in the hangar and actually see how big it is and run up and down it and stuff. That's why I use it a lot. It has a 10-ton cargo capacity, 8 size, uh, 8 missiles, and 2 twin-mounted laser cannons, and 2 a automated defense systems, a uh, short-range automated defense system for special equipment. This sounds like drones. Um, it does. It sounds like drones. However, when I was going through all these, and I'll get to it here in a second, when I was went down to... The Surveyor, which is equipped with special, like it came out saying it was going to be able to equip drones. It has drone pods as special equipment, but there are a couple more vessels that have these automated defense systems. So I, I think that when it says automated defense system, it's talking about drones, but I may be wrong. It may be talking about like auto turrets. Or something along those lines. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm I'm hoping that there'll be clarification along exactly what an automated defense system is. I, I thought they were drones, but I think I was wrong. Um, it's as long as the Retaliator, and hopefully there'll be room enough in the cargo bay to put my gold-plated buggy, of course. Uh, maybe right by the jacuzzi with the Playboy models in it. But uh, the 890 Jump is as long as the Retaliator. So for those of you who have size... It's 15 meters longer than the Connie. It's the same size as the Retaliator. So those of you have a Retaliator, when that comes out and we will be able to run around in it, it uh, the Origin 890 Jump will be as long. Uh, the Anvil Karak. This is my baby. This is the ship I've been waiting on and I'm really excited for. The Anvil Karak is, is an exploration vessel. 60 meters long, 5 meters longer than the Connie. So probably take that glass cockpit and add it on again and maybe you'll have the size. And 15 meters high, just a few meters taller than the Connie. This is an exploration vessel, 20 ton cargo capacity, the same as the Freelancer. Crew of four, four class two laser cannons, guns on a swivel, eight missiles, and a small mounted turret similar to the one on the back of the Freelancer. Plus advanced jump drive, special sensors for plotting and mapping jumps, and a repair slash medical bay. Now I'm not sure if that means a combined medical repair bay or you can do a medical bay or a repair bay at one time uh, I'm not sure I'm it might be both 
Uh, one thing is for sure though, this thing is going to be probably cramped. Anvil is a military company and this is a military vessel. It's built for purpose. It holds as much as a freelancer, but you've got a much bigger and I imagine slower ship to haul it in. Even so, I can't wait to get my hands on it. It's going to be a little cramped inside and it may be a little hard to dogfight and defend itself, but that advanced jump computer and the ability to go long distances is just amazing. And I don't know if the advanced jump computer means that it'll be able to plot new jump points. Uh, I, I would guess for a fact that you'd be able to transverse jump points that everyone knows, but maybe more fuel efficient. And you won't have to waste as much fuel jumping from point to point. Uh, as, as much as making custom jump points between systems and whatnot, I'm not sure if that's even a thing or how that's going to work. But I can't wait for them to clarify on uh, certain types of information about that. The Drake Herald, the information runner ship, 17 meters long and 4 meters high. It's a few meters shorter than the Hornet and about as high. No cargo, no cargo capacity, crew of one, two class one guns. Um, the same type as on the Avenger, the Joker Sucker Punch that are designed for interrupting electrical systems. And one class two laser on the underbody. So the same setup as the Avenger. Uh, sort of. It also has a special computer for data storage with an, uh, with an advanced encryption security hardware and high powered broadcast array, which means the data can be received and transmitted remotely, but also maybe hacking will play a role in Star Citizen. If advanced encryption software is needed to protect data, it can be inferred that there exist hacking methods and equipment that's used to protect the data from. It also has a power redundant system and EMP shielding, so equipment like the Joker Sucker Punches on the Avenger may May not be able to disrupt the power flow at all if in a best case scenario maybe not nearly as well as they would on an unshielded vessel also any other emp weapons won't affect the vessel and i wonder if this means that data stored on the vessel's computers can be destroyed or damaged by emp weapons or if they're just meant to disrupt navigation equipment it'd be interesting mechanic uh the f8 lightning the next generation of fighter from Anvil, it's the next vessel designed to replace the F-7 Hornet, or be the new thing. The most real-world comparison I see between these is the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. I'm sorry if I got the F-35 part wrong, but I know it's called the Joint Strike Fighter, and the F-22 Raptor. Uh, it's a bit, um, the F-22 Raptor is, for those of you who don't know, is this amazing advanced stealth fighter that came out, uh, years ago. And right now, the most expensive jet fighter ever created is the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, which has three variants, one for the Marines, the Air Force, and the Navy. And they kind of fill the same role. They're both Generation 4, I think it is, fighter craft. They're two of the most advanced fighter craft in the world, and really the only other vessel in the same generation as the F-22 Raptor is the Su-77 something made by Russia. And, but those two are in a generation all their own. The F-35 Strike Fighter came out to be one better than the already amazingly over-the-top ahead of its uh, game Raptor. So that's kind of the comparison. Uh, it's a little bit taller and longer than the Hornet, zero cargo capacity, crew of one, four class one guns, one class two gun in the nose, two missiles, and a ball turret. It sounds like the F-8 will have a very similar layout to the Hornet, especially since it's still got that ball turret in the back, but I'm guessing that it's designed to be a little bit more maneuverable without sacrificing the firepower of the Hornet. So I'm looking, I'm kind of looking towards something that's going to have a similar overall chassis kind of layout of the Hornet, but be probably more angular in places and a little, maybe the, the tail will be designed differently, but it kind of just a little more angular, a little more cool, like advanced looking, if you will. Now, here's one of the biggest surprises. The Hull C by Misk. When the Hull C concept came out and they talked about it, I thought that Misk, being the customizable company that they were, had uh, the different hulls for their different vessels. There was the there was the Freelancer Hull A, the Freelancer Hull B, the Freelancer Hull C, the Freelancer Hull D, and the Starfarer Hull A, B, C, and D. And then whatever vessels they come out, the different hulls would denote different things they do. A, I think, is for, uh, for solid cargo holding, and C is for smuggling. And every vessel would have those different variants. However, apparently, the Hull C is called the Hull C, and it's its own vessel called the Hull C. I have no idea why they would call it that. Um, 
It's a smuggling vessel measuring 225 meters long and 50 meters high. It's basically an Idris Corvette without the little front bit where the main cannon goes. This is the largest cargo vessel in the game that I've seen. It's a smuggling vessel. It, 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 it has a 200 ton cargo capacity, twice that of the Idris, and more than, tw and uh, not anymore, the Banu Merchant's been updated, but it's still more than the Banu Merchantman and the Starfarer. It has four automated defense systems, whatever those are, and one class 5 turret. And that's it. This thing will need an escort. It is as big as an Idris, and it has one turret. And that's it it holy hell this thing is going to be a bullet magnet but for those of you who don't have a banu merchantman and don't like it this will be your big cargo hull carrier that you'll be looking for this is the big bad boy this is this is the thing where it's like guys we're gonna go into the heart of Vandal controlled space because there's crap loads of platinum and gold in there and iron and we're gonna bring our whole sea with a crap load of people and some starfares to refuel everybody and we're gonna beat them all back mine the thing till it's full and bring it back and cash in and make a lot of money and it's a smuggling vessel it has it has decompression bays. It has hidden cargo bays. I can't show you for copyright reasons, but if any of those remember Star Wars Episode Four, the original one, when the stormtroopers came in to search the vessel after it was after it was uh, tractor beamed into the Death Star, Han and all of them hid in plates under the floor. It's the same concept. I I want it. I, I want it so bad, but the idea of making a smuggling vessel so big is so odd to me. Uh, although, I will say this, if you guys are going to board this thing and take it, those hiding spaces, I would definitely use those to ambush people. Uh, I would totally hide in those, wait for you guys to go past, come out, and gun all you down in your backs. That's what I do. So if you guys are going to be inside this thing, travel in squads and have somebody watching your rear. That's all I can say. Uh, although, one of my other big concerns about this vessel is how many crew it's going to need. Because if there's only one gun, but it's the size of an Idris, there's got to be some con something else that someone has to do. Like, there's got to be something else, because otherwise... In theory, you could crew a vessel the size of an Idris with the same crew as a Freelancer or even a Constellation. Which, I wouldn't, because you're going to get boarded and you're going to get murdered. Because this thing will make waves when pirates or something see one of these vessels. Oh my god, prepare yourselves. Because even if there's nothing on board, we can steal one and take it and sell it. And somebody will pay big money for it. It's just like the pirates who take, who they spray paint it a different color and sell it to the black market. It's still worth something even even if there's nothing inside. So if you fly one of these, you're going to need an escort because you are pretty much defenseless. And you are going to, you're going to, you're going to need to be careful. I would keep a lot of guns and know where to hide inside. The Javelin, a destroyer. This is the biggest vessel, well, not the biggest vessel we know of, but it is the next largest vessel in the UE military, ter the military, military territory, uh, kind of redundant there. It is a beautiful looking vessel, looks a lot like White Base from Gundam, to be honest with you. It has two massive cannons on top and on bottom, and I have pulled one or two pictures from subscribers only, more than I usually would, because the, the full color uh, pictures kind of don't do a good justice of seeing the layout two massive cannons on top and bottom which are clearly designed to rip into capital ships and a lot of guns it's got one landing pad exposed for a single fighter i'm not sure if a fighter there can be locked down and survive a transition to hyperspace or light speed or whatever but tons of fun if you're riding inside when it does if you can it looks my it looks amazing it's really big it looks like white base it's got all the angles it's got the cool little wings it looking from the bottom it looks cool uh it kind of looks weird in the center with this kind of ribbed design going on uh but the whole point of this is, is the thing is designed to defend itself it's not the fact that it lacks uh the ability to like 
dock fighters, they've compensated it with it for tons of guns. There are guns all over the place. There are turrets all over the place. There are tons of turrets on this thing, including the two main guns. This thing is a destroyer. Uh, it is flat, and it, it's not nearly as aesthetically ap appeasing as the Idris, in my opinion. The Idris looks way, kind of look more, like, more angles and a little better design. And it looks, it looks better. It looks cooler to look at, honestly. In my opinion, it does. But the f reason it's flat and the reason there's not much there is so that all these guns all of them have clear lanes of fire on the idris some of your turrets can't see past its own geometry in some places whereas this thing flat clear lanes of fire so that when you turn this thing aside every gun on that side can just come to bear and wail into your enemy and my only real concern is that i'm it with all the guns on it a lot of them look very big and look like they're designed to either punch holes in other capital ships or punch holes in large multi-crew vessels like bombers. I'm not sure exactly how many turrets on this thing are actually designed to f hit fighters. So maybe swarming this thing with a ton of light fighters is the way to go. Uh, destroying each turret piece by piece because they're all manned, leaving it defenseless on one side and just bombing it and riddling it with bullets, unable to hit the fast maneuverable enemies. Although the counterpoint to that is, do you have the fuel and the ammo to punch through its defenses? So there, we'll see how that goes. We won't know until the game comes out and somebody takes a crack at it. Uh, I definitely at some point will, hopefully in the beta, I want to get a bunch of people together and throw people at like Idris's and stuff and see how well we take them. That would be fun to do. I'm thinking about doing that. That'd be really fun. Also look forward to taking part in Operation Pitchfork. Uh, Banu Merchantman. Cargo capacity has been upgraded to 180 tons from 90, I think it was, a while ago. Uh, that's about it. Other than the fact that now we know how it lands, and it looks really cool when it lands. The Mustang. The new starter vessel that can be acquired. The Mustang, well, it can't be acquired right now, but it's the new starter vessel. Uh, the Mustang is a very angular-looking fighter, a star, a stark contrast from the simple and, and long Aurora model. Mustang has zero cargo capacity, which... I wonder if they'll change that, because if that's the case, then that means that anyone who has any want of getting loot will go Aurora and not Mustang. Crew of one and one twin mount laser on the other side. It also has a cooling unit and special equipment. And this makes it me believe this is a fighter. This is a gunfighter vessel. Uh, besides the fact that it only has guns, duh, but a cooling unit on the bottom means the lasers that it's armed with can fire faster and they can go longer without overheating. It's a gunfighting vessel. This thing is meant to do damage. Also, it's also probably a really good escort vessel. This thing is a starter vessel, will be really cheap. You only put lasers or some la I mean, you put a couple lasers on it. It's built in with the, with the special cooling unit for lasers. So most people will probably just stick the laser equipment on this thing. And you don't have to buy ammo for it. You don't have to buy missiles. It's a gunfighter. It's a very cheap escort vessel. It's a very cheap escort fighter. If you don't want to fly around your fancy Avenger or whatever, just take one of these out. It, you're a gunfighter. Your vessel is meant to fight because it's got no cargo capacity. So if they just meant it to be a little cruising vessel, they're stupid. They obviously designed this thing to be a gunfighter and to fight. It's just a really cheap fighter to just kind of stock up if you guys just need some padding in your in your uh, uh, escort force or anything like that. So it'll, I'm looking forward to looking forward to it. I want to get a ha I want to get a hold of it and try it. The Orion. Many players have been looking forward to this. Most economy players. The only strictly mining vessel so far. 80 meters long and 24 meters high. It's 25 meters longer than the Connie. So about half again as long. 80 ton cargo capacity, but another 40 with the optional ore saddlebags. That is a lot. This thing holds more than uh, than the Starfare. Uh, which means that it's probably got a very large belly. Probably a very large protruding uh cargo container area uh, i'm guessing the saddlebags are exposed somewhat considering that they like really like saddlebags which kind of just hang off the side of a bike so these are probably optional storage areas that probably hang off the side of the vessel and aren't protected kind of similar to i would expect how uh cargo uh, um dry good cargo would hang off the back of a starfare if you're going into dangerous mining areas, I probably wouldn't bring the saddlebags along, especially seeing as how in a, in a firefight, if your shields get chewed up, they can chew into you, into your, uh, your, your ore hold really easily. Crew of eight, six class one turrets, four of them are tractors for mining, a class one five, a class one, uh, 
one class 5 manned turret on the underside, and again, four point defense systems uh, on each side of the vessel, four total. I'm guessing that these are lasers or... Uh, these are point defense systems. These aren't automated defense systems like all the other vessels have. These are point defense systems, PDSs, where all the other ones were automated defense systems. These are point defense systems. I have no idea what these are either, but I'm guessing that these are kind of like those mini guns that are kind of like inside the pill thing you see on the sides of uh, aircraft carriers and stuff in real life that are designed to shoot down missiles and planes. Um, they're, I'm guessing that these are lasers or guns that are designed to shoot down incoming projectiles moving at a slow rate, such as missiles, torpedoes, or even very, very large, uh, like, cannon rounds, if that's possible. It's certainly an interesting vessel. I can't wait to see how mining will operate in Star Citizen. Uh, the tractors just graze across the asteroid, in theory, but the vessel is still controlled by the player. So, in EVE, you just sit there and mine, or you in WoW or whatever, you just hit a node. But I'm wondering, since you can control the ship and the tractor, if that means that you can actually tunnel into the into the asteroid and see the ore, and kind of just tunnel the into the ore and not waste your time on trying to mine the whole useless asteroid, which would keep things interesting for the mining pilot. It'd be kind of like a pseudo mini game. The Aegis Surveyor, 62 meters long and 60 meters high, 12 meters longer than the Connie, 45 ton cargo capacity, three man crew, which is very small for such a large vessel, two missile bays, one man turn on top, four ADS, automated defense systems, whatever those are, reinforced cargo bays, drone pods, floodlights, advanced scanners, and a docking collar, special equipment. The cargo bay doors on this is going to make it difficult to blow open if you're boarding. The floodlights are a good point if to, to point out salvage. Again, Again, if you're a salvager, you have to have tractor beams or someone has to go EVA to go out and get the salvage. And if you have to go inside of like a ruined Idris or something, you have to go inside to get things. It also has a docking collar, a docking collar for boarding ships. It's designed to be used on destroyed vessels that are rotting, but we all know that it won't. But again, here's where the thing comes in. It has four automated defense systems and it has drone pods but there are other vessels that have automated defense systems but they don't have drone pods which makes me think that the automated defense systems aren't drones but i could be wrong and the automated defense systems could be drones and the x this thing just has extra drone pods for more automated defense systems again i don't know i have to wait for clarification and again all this is subject to change this could all change at any moment so we're going to go into alien vessels right now. The Xi'an Scout Fighter finally has a name. Uh, the Xi'an, I'm sorry. The Xi'an Scout Fighter finally has a name. The Quihiri Kartuel. So the Xi'an, the Xi'an Light Scout Fighter uh, has, two, has two variants. There's a civilian version that they sell to us humans, and then they have the military version. However, uh, currently, when you look at it, I don't see a lot of, a lot of difference at all. They are 10 meters long, 24 meters high, again, they're vertical. It is a vertical fighter again, and it looks to still have the same stats as before. Two-man crew, two size class 1 guns, uh, two class 1 guns, four class 2 guns, no missiles, and the ship runs entirely on maneuvering thrusters. The Xi'an bomber, the Volpar, thank you for giving us a name we can pronounce. 10 meters long and 25 meters high, two-man crew, four class 2 guns, and four torps, or missiles. Uh, see, uh, anyone else seeing a 10 meters long, 25 meters high, two-man crew, anyone else seeing a comparison here? The stats and the size are basically the same as the Light Scout Fighter. So clearly in my head, this is just the Xi'an Light Fighter that's modified to fit torpedoes or missiles. Uh, but also it has a main engine, like a human vessel. It doesn't run completely on maneuvering thrusters, so it probably isn't as maneuverable as the light fighter, but it'll be interesting to see. Also, uh, I'm wondering how much other variation there'll be in Xi'an vessels. Um, the Vandal bomber and car 30 meters long and 16 meters high it's about 15 meters shorter than the connie and less than half the length of the retaliator bomber but twice as long as the gladiator bomber um yeah half as long as the retaliator and twice as long as the gladiator four man crew no cargo capacity as of yet two class one guns it's not that it has no cargo capacity it just says that it doesn't have one yet. they haven't decided on how much if any it'll have two class one guns one class two gun gun on a swivel uh so the same layout in theory as the 300i seven torps or missiles and two man turrets this one strikes me as a little odd for its size it's kind of a a hybrid the humans have the gladiator 
two-man fighter launched from carriers and the retaliator which is a large two which is a large uh huge vessel that operates autonomously however this thing in size and armament is in the middle of everything it's larger than the fighter it's larger than the gladiator and smaller than, than the retaliator but has more guns than the fighter and less it has it has less guns than the retaliator it has more crew than the gladiator but less you see where i'm getting at it has more crew than our bomber fighter uh and it has less of everything than our retaliator heavy bomber so this thing's kind of in the middle and that makes sense on it because the vanduul are a mobile raiding society they live in space they do so seeing how it's that it's based in space in my opinion this is a medium range bomber designed to be able to go out far enough to be a part of mobile raiding parties comprised mostly of fighters and uh, but small enough to resupply on a carrier or with a large cargo vessel whereas the retaliator heavy bomber might have a severe problem with that and considering that Vandal society is very much a nomadic society, this makes a lot of sense. It's the best of both worlds. It has the size to hold lots of bombs or torps, and but it is small enough to be resupplied easily remotely. And uh, the Vandal vessels, the rest of them, RSI has released a, a graph of all Vandal vessels in concept. And oh my, these things are brutal. The carrier is a half again as long uh, than the R carrier. It is nuts. The carrier is longer. It can hold tons of fighters in it. Uh, they have different cargo ships. They have bombers. They have heavy fighters, light fighters. They have boarding vessels, vessels just designed to board. They also have, in my opinion, a very interesting vessel, which is a harvesting vessel, which, which is a cargo vessel that drops on a planet, drops combines to harvest grain and such to feed the mobile Vandal people, which is very, very intimidating looking, especially considering that considering you guys are on a, a farm world, right? And you guys are testing out a new buggy that's off road. And then these things drop and you're racing back to the, the, uh, the spaceport to get your vessels out of there or go fight back. And then you just see columns of these things just grinding up the grain and you're having to drive past them or long them as their crews take pot shots at you heading back towards town. That's awesome. But also, the fact that the, they have a combine harvesting ship for grain and crops makes me brings up an important point. On the fringes of space where the Vandal raid, does this mean that agricultural-based uh, settlements that grow lots of crops will be attacked more commonly at harvest time? Will the Vandal actually wait until harvest time when all the crops and stuff are ready to invade and then drop all their ships and then take it all before human vessels can come in to buy the food and trade it? Which, considering what the Vandal are, that may seem stupid to a lot of people, but the Vandal, just because they're nomadic and warrior-based and very tribal, don't think they're not smart. That's something that I would do. Which means that for those of you who want to fight the Vandal, who want to do PvE stuff and not do a lot of PvP and want to team up with your friends, number one, this is a source of money. Because if you board and take these vessels, you can probably sell these for a lot on the market because the only way to get these vessels is to steal them. Because no one, the Vandal don't sell to us. The only way to get these vessels is to steal them, which means that you guys go out, take these, fight the, the PVE horde or whatever, get your vessels if you can, and sell them. And that's how you make your money. The other thing is, is I'm really interested to see if there's some kind of calendar where we can look at when different agricultural colonies are going to harvest, therefore they're going to have a lot of food, and players who are legitimate traders can go in and buy a bunch of food to sell, because again, other settlements are going to need people to buy food, and as long as someone's paying, players will go do it, and it makes me wonder if during harvest time, when the food's coming in in great amounts, if the Vandal are more likely to attack then. It's something that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, but again, the Vandu vessels are just mean looking. They're almost aquatic, kind of like, they're kind of like fishes, uh, some of them look like. But these things are just mean, and they are fearsome, and they are brutal, and I can't wait for these things to tear me apart when I try to tear them apart. Because these things look like they're going to be a really good fight. I can't wait. 
this is going to be really fun. I can't wait. Uh, but anyway, that's it. All I have for today, guys. I'm going to try and do more videos about some other things I want to talk about. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry for the long delay on this video. Uh, you guys check out our Facebook and our Twitter. And we have more Let's Play videos. And I do some Let's Plays. And we do some fun times where we all play League and stuff. And if you guys want to join us and be a part of our gaming community, we I, I, am, not, I am not the only person on this channel, even though I make the most videos. Um... We are a gaming community, and if you guys would like to join us, we play Minecraft, we play tons of games, not all of us, I mean, I'm I'm one of the few people who's really, really into Star Citizen, I kind of do this just for fun, because I like it, but, I mean, if you guys are looking for somewhere to play some Minecraft, or some uh, League, or some other games, check out our website, join us on the Mumble, say hi, we all play different time zones, and all kinds of stuff. Hey, you know what, you may be in a few of our videos we put up, uh... Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope to see you all again. Uh, fly safe, everyone.